So what I have here is two models. So I have the NREL 5 megawatt reference wind turbine here and the IA 50 megawatt here. And we're going to look at how the waves excite the both both wind turbines. So obviously we have quite different uh, structures. We're qu with quite different masses on the top. So obviously the eigenfrequencies are going to be very different, and that's what I'm looking at right now. I'm just solving for eigenfrequencies. And okay, well this is the side to side, which is not what I'm interested in. I want to see the four raft because that's what's going to get triggered by the waves. And so for the 50 megawatts, I have a first again period of 6.49 seconds and for the 5 megawatts I have okay 3.62 so cool let's let's keep these these numbers in mind and if I come back to my time simulation so now we're, we're gonna run simulation with uh, with regular waves so if I set the period to 3.62 which was the again period of this uh, this model. So when I start my simulation, here you can see the, um, the wave elevation and here you can see the displacement of the, the top of the tower. So the red line is the, um, the displacement of the 15 megawatts and the blue line is the displacement of the, of the 5 megawatts. And here you can see that you know we get like this um, amplified motion that's increasing and increasing and we can also zoom in and see here how the top of the tower is moving and yeah I mean that makes a lot of sense we're like we're applying a hydrodynamic load exactly at the frequency of the at the eigenfrequency of the, the structure so so you know so we get resonance and here well after a while it stops increasing because we have um, structural damping in the in the model and now well you see that the the 50 megawatts didn't get much motion at all but if I change the wave period to, so it was 6.49, so now I have waves that have the period corresponding to the eigenperiod of, of the 50 megawatts. So now you, you see that the opposite is happening, right? So you see, you see, well, you see that there's not gonna be that much motion of the five megawatt, which is the blue line, but you see that the 50 megawatt is starting to get amplified motion at the tower top. I think if you zoom in, we should be able to to see how it moves ever so slightly. We could increase the we could increase the um, the visualization of the of the movements, but for now we're just going to leave it like this. Cool. So this is all with linear waves. Um, what's interesting to see also is what happens with non-linear waves, and for that we're going to do one last simulation here. So let's have let's have a 10 meters. Uh, wave height and 12.98 period wave period so 12.98 is exactly twice the eigenperiod of the of the 50 megawatts if you remember the, the numbers from before and uh, yeah so now what you can see well there's not you, you see that there's not really any amplification uh, this is kind of the motion is kind of peaking at 10 centimeters or well a bit less in the in the negative direction and it's also interesting to see that there's kind of a little little hump here which is due to the due to well it's the is the period of the is the eigen period of the structure so you know we have the wave frequency which is goes from here to here but then you also have tower motion which is why you have like a little a little hump here but now the point is what happens if i switch to nonlinear waves and we have the stream function here and so now we're going to apply the same wave, which is going to be so it's 10 meters high and 12.98 seconds. And yeah, let's start the simulation. So the first thing that you can notice already is that the, the waves look quite different, right? Uh, before we had like this nice uh, sine linear wave, and now if you look here. Or if you look here, you see that the wave looks quite different. So the crests are much higher, the troughs are much lower, and the wave is steeper. And if you look at the at the tower top motion now, you see that we do get this, this amplification. So before we picked at 10 centimeters, and now we're like already almost at, uh, at one meter motion. 
And that is because now that we have nonlinear waves, we have loads at we, we don't have loads only at the harmonic of the wave. We also have loads at at higher harmonics. And in this particular case, there's um yeah th there's the load at the second harmonic of the wave is hitting exactly the the natural period of of my of my model. So that's that's why we get this uh, this resonance again. That's why we get this motion. Um, I should just a, a small disclaimer. Uh, it's not the only thing that that uh, that affects the motion. I mean, we also we're also applying loads, um, you know, at, at the higher point in the at the um, at the tower because before we you know we just had linear waves with no wheel stretching. And also, um, when you apply linear waves, you also have loads at higher harmonics due to the drag term in the Morrison equation. Um, but the drag term is quite small for for a monopile this this diameter, so. So that's why this is kind of, it's still very illustrative of, of uh, what's happening for these type of models. Cool, so I hope this made sense. Um, these two models you can download from our website, so I'll put a link in the description. And yeah, as always, if you liked it, like and, and subscribe and, and see you around.